Hey everybody, it's Mike, Rocky Ridge. Um, so what I've been doing here with these, uh, with these birds that I'm trying to rehome, uh, I'm getting them used to the truck and it's been working out uh, really good. Not only are they getting used to the truck, but they're having a little bit of extra room so they can get out and explore and um, have a little bit more scenery. Of course, they have that outside cage part right there. But I think what I'm gonna do today uh, I'm going to get them all in the truck and then drive it right to the front yard. <clears throat> well, maybe, you know, far enough that they can still see the loft. And then I'm going to release them and start doing that, getting them used to being released from the truck. Um, the other day I had um, uh, a hawk that came through. They were all on the house and on the loft. And a hawk came through and um, frightened two of them up. And... I found out just how good these guys can fly. They don't have any trouble flying. Um, one of them flew for over 45 minutes and it did come back to the loft. And another one flew, um, just flew away and I never saw it again. So we're still at a, at a uh, pivotal point here on the rehoming. Some will stick around and um, some want to go back to where they originally came from probably is directly related to to their age you know and what month they were hatched but um, that one right there um, kind of flew away on the first day but it didn't get far and um, it did come back but so anyway for, for a little recap these are not these birds were not from here they've been flown by a club member that passed away and um, and so that's, that's why they're here. Um, um, all the other club members wanted to see these birds raced and just to honor, um, the, the man's name was Mike, to honor Mike. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. So I have 25 right now, even 25. And, um, and it's, it's gonna be a while before I can get these uh, fly in the area. They kind of got a little bit out of shape and overweight, so I got to deal with that as I try to get them flying, but you know, it's, it's just a process. Let me get them uh, loaded up and I'll show how well they can fly. So it only takes a second to, uh, to load them up and they're, um, I drove them way over there. And I'm going to release them from right there and uh, we'll see what they do. There's some beautiful birds in there. Like all of them. <laughs> Just really nice, really nice birds. Looks like they're ready. Alright guys, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Well, they didn't do very much. None of them went up. So I'll keep them out for a couple hours like usual. Um, I don't let them out every day. I let them out every other day. And yesterday they had nothing to eat at all. And the day before, on the days that I do let them out, um, they get all the food that they want so that's how I do it and um, I'm able to keep control of them very well by doing it that way I would really love to see a couple do some circles around the yard the uh, the eighth ninth and tenth flights are um, about they're about halfway grown back already so um, and as I saw the other day they can fly and some of them that stretching their wings a little bit, but it would be real nice to see them start circling around, you know. But we'll see how it goes, and uh, I'll show some of the other birds meanwhile. So this was my is my original race team that I bred. A lot of these, um, they've been out uh, 35 miles three times, and then there's seven young ones that Muleman, that pure white, 
um, that Huskin Van Rio pied, um, that rubula back there, and that rubula, and that red one, and this guy right here also. They're late hatches, and um, so I put them in here, and and they um, they've been flying really well. Uh, actually, yesterday I took them out on a 10-mile toss, and um, they all stayed together now. So, um, for some reason, yesterday's 10-mile toss, they they came home. I mean, they beat me home, and it was super hot out, and uh, they were panting like dogs. For some reason, they came they came home as fast as they possibly could fly, supersonic speed. So that was interesting. But uh, that pure white one right there, um, I'll show you its parents. And that, that is 100% pure white. So these are the parents right here. I was uh, kind of shocked to see uh, the only pure white that I know of in their background is a Belgian Delbar, and that's uh, from the mother on the nest right there. She's half Huskin Van Riel and half Belgian Delbar. And this guy is Trenton and um, uh, Gannis White, but the Gannis White wasn't pure white. It had brown on its back. Uh, a lot of people have asked me about this bird because it was, it was gone for a good part of the season last year. And, um, and now it's uh, now it's one of my good breeders. She came back and I do fly her whenever she's not on a nest and him also. Whenever they're not on a nest, uh, they go back in the flying loft and I fly them every day. Just like I do with a lot of my birds. These two, um, that's big money on the right and, um, and a Sun City hen on the left. These guys have produced a lot of birds. Uh, you know, I, I would fig I would figure uh, they'd want to take a break, but um, they just keep going. And actually, I had uh, big money with with an ornat hen for two rounds, and um, they only raised one of them themselves, and I fostered the other round. So I mean, he's produced a ton of babies this year, probably in the neighborhood of 10, 10 young ones. Got some more Muleman's uh, babies here. A real nice pair of silvers. This guy's a little protective, but oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a good daddy. Um, their first round came out super nice. That's a Imbrecht pair. Another another pair of nice silvers here. They're one of their babies usually comes out pied, but uh, that's a Jensen, and the other one I'm not 100% sure of the bloodline, but um, re really nice. I had I had one of their babies on um, on a race team last year, did real well, and this is a special pair right here. This is my best Huskin Van Riel, uh, mated with the sister of my best Black Eagle and she did a 500 mile race for Jack Burak and uh, this guy here won the combine race so they have two babies two babies right now so we'll see uh, I might I might stock them stock one sell one I'm not sure but it's going to be a tremendous babies right there this pair um, I just put together the other day I bought that uh, Imbrecht silver and this this blue bar on the right her father was a silver so I'm, I'm expecting to get silver babies but we'll see how it goes but that blue bar uh, her mother was my very first racing pigeon that I ever had and she looked exactly like her and she got taken by a hawk which uh, really upset me I, I really liked that bird and I let it fly when it was out of shape and a hawk grabbed her right away. So I have her daughter and hoping to get some nice silvers. And this pair right here is 100% Muleman. Um, the hen on the right produces super racing pigeons and everything that flies good comes from that, that cock on the left. So they make a real nice pair and usually I get one indigo bar 
baby from from every time I breed them. And actually, her son was my best racing pigeon last year. So breeding some real nice nice birds. A pair of Rocky Ridge Whites right there, really good pair. Another pair of Rocky Ridge Whites right there. Um, I don't even think that they're sitting on those eggs anymore. Uh, I think they called it quits, so they'll be coming out of here real soon. So anyway, when I saw a pure white come from this pair, I figured, well, that's kind of special. So I, I put her right on the flying team, and, uh, and so far, she's doing great. Let's check on Mike's birds out there. So there they are. They're all roaming around on the house roof. All right, so it's been a couple hours, and actually I had some, uh, two of them that were circling around the yard, and uh, kind of went up a little bit high, and was able to uh, to come back and la land with the others. So that's perfect. Every day, I, I imagine there'll be a few more that that join in, and uh, until we get them all flying. So I'm going to call them in for their food now. See how they respond. Got a couple stragglers, but uh, they're trapping really well today. So these birds are doing great. They do everything they're supposed to do. Um, I'm just hoping that, uh, you know, there's no hawks that scare any more off. And, and uh, this is going to be 50% of my racing team right here are going to be Mike's birds. So. Oh, one more. That pretty cock bird. Come on, buddy. <laughs> So they'll get all the food that they want today up until about noontime and then uh, no food at all tomorrow and I find that's the best method um, for, to, to keep control really. Um, I do the same thing now with my my racing team and you can see they're not they're not overly hungry they're just eating normal um, you know they whatever they need they can get it today and uh, so anyway, I experiment with a lot of different methods and um, that's what I came up with. Some people might think it's a little bit uh, mean, but you can, you can feel these birds and uh, they're not lacking anything. Uh, like I said, they, they can have all they want today. So, well anyway, thanks everybody. And please subscribe, thumbs up if you like the videos and I'll catch you on the next update.